So we are starting the recording. We're going. Okay. okay great. Thanks, Jim. Okay, let's see here. Uh, oh, Vice President, that's me. So, uh, Ivy, do we have a quorum? That's affirmative. Great, uh, thanks. Uh, so we can vote on the minutes here. To, uh, it's like, is there a motion to approve the minutes as public, the minutes of the last general meeting as published in the relay? In seven RAC. Okay, Sam. Anybody, and a second? Hey, Jason, Evan Goldfinger, no Bravo, second. Hey, Jason, I got you down as a second, Jason. Uh, all in favor, click yes. Uh, all against, click no. Go ahead and vote now. And again, I want to remind everybody, uh, only the members should be voting today on yeah, the of our votes things. And you'll find the uh, yes and no stuff under the participants tab. Thanks, Jim. Okay, Phil, it looks like we have uh, 28 is there and then we're going to give uh, like two more seconds. So if you haven't clicked it, click it now. All right, we're at 34, Phil. So it looks like that passes. Okay, great. So the A's have it and the mo and the uh, minutes are approved. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and consider some uh, new members here uh, on my list. Oh, looks like we've got a couple of more folks that uh, dropped on in here. So it's like, uh, it's like uh, uh, I'll consider what I have for now and I'll go through the list here in a bit. And uh, the first one I've got here that the board has approved and is waiting for your guys' consideration is James Otis. Go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us a bit about yourself. James? Uh, yeah, this is me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, um, I wanted to be a ham in 1956. And uh, uh, so my dad got a thing from White Westinghouse and uh, I started building a transmitter and receiver in Spokane. Uh, but then a number of things interfered. So when I went into the Navy in 61, being a farmer from northern North Dakota, I knew about horses, but they don't have that in the Navy. So they sent me some schools and I got assigned on the USS Ariskany CBA 34 in the electronics department. And I worked on major radar, major uh, communications, uh, top seer, crypto, and uh, naval tactical data systems. <clears throat> then I spent 45 years in the computer industry. That's about it. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, James. Uh, anybody have any questions, comments for uh, for James? Hi, James. This is Steve, KK7ZR. You said your dad got something from White Westinghouse. What was that something? I missed that. Oh, it's an old. It was an old um, TV chassis uh, that had been torn apart, and it was about maybe 15 inches by 12 inches. Had a half a dozen tubes on it and uh, a couple of transformers and he gave me the schematic and so i started going on that we had a uh in the eighth grade in spokane we had a guy named byron green uh who was w7 bre uh and we were all trying to get our license our novus license so we could use that and uh um but uh things interfered so That's and awesome. now 67 years later, I decided to pick up uh, doing uh, uh, amateur radio again. Great. Thank you. The fact that you mentioned White Westinghouse is pretty impressive. Westinghouse was one of my first jobs in Pittsburgh out of school. So I just thought I'd ask mm. about that. Thank you. Hey, great. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, Dan, KG7 DAB. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, Steve, uh, do you have a license now? 
Oh, no, this is Jim. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, Jim. Uh, do you have a, I'm on my cell phone, so I can't really tell. Um, do you have a license now or are you going to get one or what's going on? Uh, I'm taking my technician li license test today. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get it then if you're into electronics. So congratulations. Yeah. Oh, just a, uh, as an, uh, on a side note, um, when I worked at Bell Labs, I came back to spoke or to Seattle in 68 and I was a marine technical operator for KOW 2192 for four years. So, anyway, I had a lot of extra electronics experience over the years. Great. Okay, anybody else before we, uh, before we uh, vote on you? Uh, okay, I'm not hearing anything. So uh, Jim, if you could um, do your duty real quick for us. James, mm -hmm. what we're gonna do is we're gonna temporarily put you into the waiting room so that we can vote on you. And then when we're done with the vote, we will bring you back in and let you know the results of the vote. Okay, thank you much. Okay. Okay, he is in the waiting room. Okay, so uh, anybody else have anything to say about, uh, say about uh, Jim there? Go ahead so, and unmute yourself. Okay. Oh, yeah, Jim sounds something. like he's got quite a bit of uh, background, and that's really great. The only question I wonder <clears throat> is how someone has all that background and is just now finding the Mike and Key Club. Uh, that's a good thing, but uh, we should probably ask him. It's like, how did he find us at this point in his stage of life? We actually asked that on the uh, the application. Oh, what well, did he no, say? That I'm, I'm just I'm excited that he's coming coming back into it after that many years. You know, yeah, maybe better family. late than never. Family yep. pulled him, pulled him aside. I'm sure, and now he's got me some time. Exactly, life happens. It's <laughs> like, a big world. He's got a great yeah. neck control voice. Yes, he does. There you <laughs> go. I noticed that. Hint, too. Hint. Dan, Dan, sign him up. <laughs> hint, hint. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nobody wants to be a net operator. I found that out. <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever. Like I was so willing that I came over to you and said I wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we need more people like you. So. Yeah. I, th I agree. Well, so Jim let's called, go. Jim called me uh, oh, a week or so ago, oh. and uh, I'm not sure where he got my number, but uh, he had heard of the mic and key, and evidently he got my number from someplace, and uh, I kind of steered him towards Scott for the license exam, because that was one of the things his, his question was about, was where he could get tested. And um, we had, uh, oh, I don't know, we must have spoken on the phone for close to half an hour and um he's got a got a lot of background seems like a nice guy and mm -hmm. um finally has the time to uh to get back into the hobby that he started and got interrupted in so i think he'd be good for the club i agree i agree okay so without anything else uh here go ahead and uh cast your votes yes or no for uh for james otis And member members only. Okay, Phil. Looks. Uh, let's give it two two more seconds. Two more seconds, folks. And Phil, we have uh, forty. Great. Forty-two. Uh, all right. So uh, the yeas have it, and uh, James Otis is approved. Uh, go ahead and welcome him in back, uh, Jim. Hey, James. Um, welcome to the club. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I I appreciate uh, getting the vote, and I will be a participant. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, James, for uh, stopping on in here. And next one we have on my list. I have a seven. We're going to have seven to go through here. We have quite a few today. Is uh, Brendan Keyport, WA Seven BMK. Go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us a bit about yourself. Hi there. My name's Brendan. I. Uh used to be N7 UIE and uh, quite active, and then marriage and all that went away. Uh, both, that all is eliminated now, uh, <laughs> incompatibilities. But uh, I'm getting back into things, and I figured I might as well join up with the, with the club that uh, 
I got my initial license from way back in the day. Oh, great. Uh, and uh, go from there. Great. Uh, thanks, Brendan. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for uh, joining us here. Anybody have anything to say to uh, Brendan? Any questions or comments? I like his name. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> That's the only way it's spelled right, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, are you uh, interested in digital modes at all? Have you played around? I, I am. I'm looking and figuring out what I'm interested in. Uh, there's a lot of changes from when I was back in back in the day. The only thing that uh, that I was in, I was really involved in packet back in back uh, when I was first getting going there. We uh, did a little, or we had the Northwest Packet system or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but. That's where I got involved involved the most, but uh, I don't know what's available now, and I'm still kind of looking into it. Cool, great, thanks. Got lots of good opportunities here. Oh yeah. Are you, are you planning on changing your call sign back to your original? Uh, no. <laughs> that looks like, like a vanity. <laughs> yeah, my my BMK is. I figured that was a little easier than than UIE when you try to say it on the radio and. Uh, it, it, it t people get kind of confused with that, you know, mm -hmm. so. I can imagine how you get a little bit tongue tied with that one, with the UI. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> Anybody else? Not hearing anything. Uh, go ahead, uh, Jim, and uh, take him outside for a minute. Okay, can... Careful. Okay, Brendan, there you are. I had to let it resort so I could find you. Okay, Brendan, we're going to put you in the waiting room. Okay. Uh, okay. Anybody, uh, anybody else have any other comments? Not, not hearing anything, so I guess we'll go right to the vote. Uh, go ahead and cast your votes, yes or no. Okay, two more seconds. And uh, we have 41 votes. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to add him back in. Welcome back. Yay. Yay. Welcome to the club. Well, that was quick. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And there's much rejoicing. <laughs> uh, welcome, Brandon, and uh, good to have you on board. Thank you very much. Okay. Go ahead and get my, there we go. Man maneuvering my two screens here. Next one here that I have on my list is uh, Ralph Lucier. Uh, this KA7VEE. Uh, -E. Go ahead and tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, how are you doing today? Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. Whichever. <laughs> Excuse me. I've been in amateur radio for forty years. Uh, I've been in IT for forty years. I'm uh, working now with uh, digital modes as far as DMR. I have a cold fusion or I have a, a fusion repeater. Um, uh, let's see. What else can I say? Um, Boy, now I go blank. Anyway, um, so uh, anyway, uh, I'm here in Marysville. Uh, I actually know about Mike and Keith because back uh, I met. Well, as I said, I've been, I'm an amateur radio operator since, since 1981, so I know about Mike and Keith. I was the radio officer for Skagit County, excuse me, uh, Snohomish County back in the 1980s. So I did all that emergency management kinds of stuff. So. Anyway, that's me. I'm, I'm a public service kind of guy. So anyway, I'm really interested in technology. So I actually developed, uh, yeah, that area ago, I developed uh, the website for the Skagit County Radio Group way back in early 2000. Also helped maintain the repeater. So anyway, that's me in a nutshell. I'm just an all around good tinkerer. So <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Ralph. Uh, anybody? Have any uh, anything? Any comments or questions? 
he's got my vote. He's been in IT for 40 years. <laughs> he's, he's seen everything come around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Technology has drastically changed. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. there, there's another 25. great net control voice. Yeah, uh -oh. I, well, I ran net controls yeah. before, so yes. Yeah. Well, if, hey, if, there you go. Uh, if you We're, could, if you could turn off your background so I can use a screenshot of your face, that would be appreciated. Uh, okay, hang on a second. There we go. There we go. So yeah. Now, now we got a silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lighting's pretty bad. Come forward a little bit. Uh, here, let's turn it. I'll turn myself around. Maybe I can get get the window out of the get, view. Get get a full get a full of the T-shirt. Yeah. The, okay. If you don't like ham radio. <laughs> if you don't like ham radio, it's a, a kind of a smart guy, a smart people's hobby. Oh yeah, I've seen that one. <laughs> yeah, I saw that T-shirt. I said I gotta have it. So. Uh huh. It's like, yeah, there's always that one, that one t-shirt vendor that comes to the ham fest every year. <laughs> I've seen stuff. I like, the, I love, I like those shirts. Uh, anybody else, any questions or comments for Ralph here? Not hearing anything, so go ahead, Jim, and uh, take him out in the waiting room for a second here. Okay. All right, he's in the waiting room. Great, thank you. Anybody have any other, any further comments about uh, Ralph here? Yeah, so, so Ralph is a really interesting person. Uh, the reason he's here today is mainly because of me. I've been, I talked him into becoming here. Uh, he's a workmate of mine and he's actually the one oh, responsible okay. for getting me back into HF. Uh, I've been, we're about the same age. I was licensed in 84 in Miami and I'd been away from HF for a while. But after work, we used to go out for a dinner and drinks and talking about all this stuff. And it's like, wow, he's walked the same life I have. And uh, over the, the last couple of years, we really talked and got really close. And uh, uh, in being part of the, er, the, I joined the one special interest group meeting. And throughout that whole meeting, I thought, Ralph needs to be here. Uh, and I think others who heard his story would agree that. So I, I really egged him on to come and join the club would like to get him in a special interest group. And I think he's going to be a wonderful asset. He's an all around great guy with a good uh, background. So he's got a double vote from Steve. I like wow, that's... comment that he's a lifelong tinker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for bringing him in, Steve. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. He's kind of been hanging out there in limbo. Oh, DMR. Oh, he got me into DMR quite a bit. And he's just incredibly knowledgeable on that stuff. You know, I thought I knew a lot of stuff being in the ham radio as long as I did. It's like, no, sometimes there's certain special interests that people know a whole lot more than you do. So he's a good teacher, a good, good person, really mellow. I think he's going to be a great member. So I can't say enough about it. Great. Yeah. That sounds like, it sounds like a, uh, sound, that sounds really great there. Uh, and I think yeah, it's like, I agree. Cool. A little far north up in Murraysville, but that's okay. We have members all over the place. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. <coughs> it's like, yeah. Sorry. Mar Marysville isn't north. It's like Linden is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's way north. <laughs> uh, okay. Anybody else before we uh, before we vote? Not hear anything. So go ahead and cast your votes, everybody. Yes or no? Okay, two more seconds. <clears throat> no dying on us, Jim. Come on now. Yeah, I know. I, I <laughs> <clears throat> wow, got some tickle in the throat. Okay, we got 40 votes. Great. So uh, I will add him back in. Welcome to the club, Ralph. Yay! <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us, Ralph. I think you'll be a great asset to the club. Yeah, I also want to mention I worked for Como TV for seven years, and I'm the oh, one wow. that kept the station on the air. So I just thought, oh yeah, I was going to mention that. So anyway, yes. 
it's like yeah thanks for thanks for uh finding us and uh for joining us here it's like we're it's like welcome on board well you gotta but, you gotta well you say thanks to steve uh, uh kk7nr he said hey you know mike and keith oh yeah i remember those guys so yeah yeah uh thank you very much for inviting me and you know welcome me uh, into your uh, membership so Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, coming on in here. It's uh, glad to have you, hey, Ralph. What uh, TV station was that? I missed it. Como. Co Como TV. Uh, back in the day when it was Fisher Communications, I kept all mm. the radio, all the TVs and radio yeah. stations going. The seven stations that we own. Thank you. Okay, so, so the next one. We've to, uh, say hello to Mark, who worked for KING in Seattle too. Oh yeah, <laughs> another one. <laughs> Uh, okay, next, uh, I'm going to move on here to our next application. And this is uh, Mike Deal, N7URH. I've heard him many times on my, uh, on my net. So we'll, uh, go ahead and say hello to you and uh, go ahead and tell us about, uh, about yourself, Mike. Hi, Mike. Um, yeah, I got, so um, I kind of have an interesting story in a way. I've been, I got my license about 30 years ago when I was in high school studied for it when I was actually in a Kentwood electronics class and, and such like that. Um, as soon as it went to no code, me and my best friend went out and got our got tests and passed our licenses. And the funny thing is he actually remembered and told me when I was talking to him recently, I'm going to get my test passed through my test today, is that uh, I actually passed my general back then. I just didn't have my 13 words a minute of code and uh, completely spaced that I did got, you know, that, but, um, for better or for worse, code is not something that's interested me a whole lot, but um, what I'm into a lot more is the digital modes and things like that. Um, being a computer guy, that's kind of always where I've, I've gravitated though, but nothing wrong with uh, CW, it is a digital mode, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of fell out of doing ham radio and stuff when I, you know, things changed. Uh, I went and joined the Air Force and fixed computers there for a while and then came back and then recently I bought some radios to have in my van, just as a kind of a happenstance. And then um, back when the COVID stuff came along, um, like a lot of us, I refound my radios that I had programmed for repeaters and started listening in to uh, this repeater mostly in the PSRG one and started joining in nets and things like that and getting back into things and um, ended up uh, setting up my, uh, my mobile rig in a way to do uh, FT8 and uh, got me into doing 10 meters. And well, that's got me uh, wanting to upgrade to my general license now and get across all the bands. Um, re part of the reason I'm actually kind of more interested in digital right now, at least at home, is it cuts through the noise, right? I have a whole lot of noise. I live right across from Boeing and I can't figure out if I have the noise or not, or if it's my neighbors. Um, my Elmer says it's a switching power supply when I showed him screenshots of my 7300. Anyways, yeah, I already picked up a 7300 to do things. and um, Great. Uh, so I'm ready to go, and I already have a portable radio for my van. I got a super antenna, which is an, a portable multiband antenna. Uh, I've got a variable tuner, a slide up and down tuner. Anyways, um, um, one of the things that I would actually make me join this club, which I know is going to sound crazy, is I'm actually kind of interested in being a net control person. So hey. <laughs> um, I think I kind of I'm good at answer talking back to people more than I'm actually good at uh, doing stuff. And as you can tell, I'm kind of good at rambling, <laughs> which, you know, for better or for worse, that's uh, kind of works that well. But anyways, um, I also work at a, do a lot of electronic side projects myself, wired my van, things like that, put battery plants in there and things like that. Um, it's kind of a fun, that was my fun toy before I started doing the amateur radio stuff again. And um, I actually work at a wireless internet company. So I do wireless internet and on 2.4 okay. and 5 and a bunch of licensed bands and things like that. So that's kind of my uh, professional side of the of word. Uh, I got actually that job by having my amateur radio license on my resume. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, so it helps sometimes, you know, to put that on there, right? Anyways, um, I think that's my spiel for now. Any questions, I guess? I think N7URH is a, is a call sign I may, may be familiar with. Did you check into the 441.55 repeater nets uh, recently or in the last couple of months since COVID? I may have. I believe that's in my, in my W2A. 
I put a, I put a handful of, I put a whole bunch of repeaters in my scanner and I have about a handful of them in my W2A also. And I think I've checked into that one. Which, which yeah. is that, which, which repeater is that? Is that the, the Renton repeater or? That'd be the one we use for the, no, that's, that's the one we would use for the American Red Cross. Okay. I've checked into a handful of other repeaters, but mostly this, the Mike and Key and the PSRG repeaters are probably my two go-tos right now. I was going to say, Mike is really uh, active on, on the new nets on PSRG. I talk with him a lot. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he checks, he's checked in quite a few times to uh, my uh, Thursday night social net. So yeah, and he's always, uh, it's like, he's, he's always a good check-in. So it's like, He's, he's there most weeks, so and I appreciate that. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Uh, anybody else have anything from Mike before we usher him out to the waiting room here? Not hearing anything, so uh, if you could, Jim. Uh, you're muted. Yep, I didn't want to be coughing all over everything. <laughs> okay, he's in the uh, waiting room. Okay, thanks, Jim. Anything? Anybody have any uh, comments about uh, Mike? Dan KG seventy eight B. I knew you would say something. <laughs> well, well, he's got he's got votes for two reasons. First of all, he's got an Nicom seventy three. He's got an Icom seventy three hundred. So, hey, priorities here. Yeah, he's got an Icom seventy three hundred, so he's got my vote. Um, and yes, net control. So. I'm gonna break out my shepherd's hook and reel him in. There you go, <laughs> uh, Mike. Uh, Mike. Mike's actually joined some of the uh, SIG uh, uh, groups uh, over the few weeks. Um, really knowledgeable in digital, and like I said before, he's he's always consistently on my new nets on Saturday over at PSRG. So, real helpful, real knowledgeable. Shares uh, usually has comments, uh, help other people out even on the net. So, uh, he's he's a good guy. Anybody else? Not uh, hear anything. Uh, go ahead and uh, cast your votes for Mike. Two more seconds. All righty, we are at 38 votes. All right, so it looks like uh, Mike is approved, and we'll go ahead and let him back in and uh, welcome him to the club. Welcome to the club, Mike. Congrats. Yay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. I hope to be a participant in, much, in a couple of special interest groups, too. So we'll see how that all works out. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, good to have you on board there, Mike. Uh, look forward to uh, seeing you at the, seeing you at the, uh, on these uh, club meetings here. Yeah. Next one. It's like we still got a few more here to look through here. So we're going to next one here I got is uh, Edward Smith, KJ7OUP. Uh, go ahead and tell us a bit about yourself. How are you doing today? Sorry, I had to find the unmute button. It always seems to be hiding on me. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I actually got my uh, technician's license probably about, um, I'm doing math and not looking it up, but about probably about six weeks ago. And I got my general about three weeks ago, give or take. So fairly new to the hobby, but I, uh, I first learned about it actually when I was in uh, Boy Scouts and I remember going through and getting a uh, getting to experience it back then and I'd always been a little bit curious and uh, I've uh, got a little bit more time inside my house recently for some reason and I decided I would uh, uh, it would be a good time to take up a new hobby. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, a little bit about me. Great. Uh... Thanks, Edward. And uh, does anybody have any questions or comments for uh, for Ed here? None. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. So uh, if you could, Jim. Okay. Okay, he's in the waiting room. Uh, do we have, and say, I'll ask again, anybody have any uh, comments uh, about uh, Ed? Scoop him up while he's uh, energetic since he just got his tech in general. <laughs> mm -hmm. A twofer, yeah. Anybody else? 
not hearing anything, so uh, go ahead and uh, cast your votes, please. Okay, two more seconds. And I also notice, uh, Geraldine, you have your hand up. Do you have a question? Okay, uh, we have 37 votes. Okay, great. Uh, go ahead and let him back in. Okay. Uh, how am I supposed to push on yes or no for the voting? Yes. Oh, it's yeah, a yes, yes or yeah, yes or no. Yes, okay. you are supposed to push yes or no. <laughs> All right, thanks. No worries. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, joining us. And uh, just a question for you: uh, How do you find out about our club? Google. I'm a who me? Uh, no, for Edward. Uh, Google. I was actually going through mm -hmm. and um, One being new to the hobby, I decided I'd go through and figure out uh, what was going on. So that my first introduction is I actually got my license. I had a radio that I purchased beforehand. I turned it on and I found one of the PSGR uh, nets, uh, just okay. dumb luck. I ran across it. I'm like, hey, what is this? What's going on here? And then I started to look around for what was going on in the Seattle area. And I, uh, I ran across you guys um, and uh, the, uh, uh, was the West Seattle uh, club as well. So those were, I, those are the two I ran across. You guys were probably the first one that popped up, I think. Great. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, finding out about us and joining us. Uh, we're glad to have you on board here, and look forward to seeing you at many more meetings. Well, thank you, guys. I'm happy to be a member. Okay, so uh, go ahead and move on to our next application here. If I can get my cursor to get to the proper place here, hold on. Darn it. Ah, is it that way. Yeah, it's that way. There we go. And uh, next here, I've got uh, Ben Gilliate, uh, KF7WDD. Go ahead and uh, tell us a bit about yourself. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I originally heard out from you guys when I volunteered to help my dad out doing Ramrod these past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, time finally allowed me to join in one of your meetings where it keeps me busy on the weekend most times. But uh, you guys both are, my uh, parents are here. My dad is Scott, KC7SAG, <laughs> and my mom, uh, Roseanne, K7RMG. So finally joined the family and yeah, bouncing great. around everywhere. Yeah, great. Uh, it's like I knew that uh, name sounded familiar. So uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for jumping on, uh, jumping on the board here and uh, putting in your application. Anybody have any questions or comments for Ben? Ben, what's your feeling about digital modes? If I had a good way to practice it, I'd hop on it quickly. <laughs> I just don't quite have the equipment for it at the time. Okay. Yeah, I'd uh, like to mention uh, a, a good thanks to uh, Ben, Scott, and um, Roseanne. Roseanne. They have volunteered for the swap meet and they are part of the financial committee that hey. helps run things in the back. So I appreciate their help and I'm glad that Ben finally has a Saturday that he can uh, come in and uh, be voted in. So looking forward to having Ben in, in the uh, club. He did look familiar. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I love doing these uh, events out and around. So. If I have the time, I'll see you out and about at these events. Great. But uh, they start to be back up again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ben, for uh, for helping out with that. That's much appreciated. I knew I, I thought I recognized that face and name. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any uh, questions or comments before we uh, usher him off to the waiting room here for a sec? Not seeing anything, so uh, go ahead and uh, okay. We'll see. Put you him in there for a sec. Okay, so uh, thanks. Uh, anybody have any comments uh, about uh, Ben before we vote? 
Uh, this is Sam in Seven R H E. It's kind of nice to have Scott and uh, Roseanne and Ben. It's nice to have family memberships. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, anybody else have anything? My wife and I are really uh, pleased that he's able to finally join us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, uh, anybody else? I'm not seeing anything, so uh, go ahead and cast your uh, votes, uh, yes or no. Okay, two seconds. And we've got 42 yes votes. Yay. Adding him back in. Sweet. Congrats. Hey. Welcome to the club, Ben. Woohoo. Well, glad to have joined. Yeah, thanks for uh thanks for joining us. And thanks and we'll, thanks for your uh helping of the club. I really mm, appreciate it. Yeah, the help. it's much appreciated. Swap means one of our biggest events of the year and it needs every bit of help it can get. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you have an announcement when we get at the very end of uh, voting, so I don't know where we're at, but I know we're, uh, we've got I a lot of time. It's like, yeah, we have like two or three more here, so, okay. uh, so I'll let you know. Cool. Okay, let's see if he's still on the call. Yep. Next here on my uh, list, I've got uh, Ralph Downey, that's W7TLD. Uh, go ahead and Tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, how are you doing today? Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Ralph Downey. I live in the Miramont area of Issaquah. Okay. And I've been involved or interested in amateur radio forever and finally started in it about 15 years ago. I got my technician in general through Mike and Key, and I got my extra in June in the parking lot, which was really well done. Uh, I'm trying to learn CW. That's my main interest. I know the alphabet, but hearing it is different. And uh, I'm interested in getting involved in the club, you know, participating when I can. We tend to RV a lot, so we're out of town. But right now, obviously, that's not working very well either. So we'll, I'll participate as I can through Zoom and hopefully meet many of you face to face when it finally opens up. Hey, great. Uh, thanks, Ralph. Uh, thanks for coming on uh, in here. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments? I would just like to say I'd like to uh, congratulate him on on getting in on the first digital mode, CW. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we do have a special interest group on Mondays. Mondays, on yes. CW Monday and via Zoom and uh, most of the participants have made giant strides. So if you know the alphabet, you're ahead of some of us. Okay, I'll be there. Yep, every uh, Monday at uh, 8.30, and more than welcome to uh, join us. What, yeah. what antenna is that in the background, Ralph? Oh, it's a stepladder. No. Oh, is that the no, antenna? just purely a stepladder. Oh. <laughs> I've got an infant half wave outside right now, and I'm trying to get it high enough so that it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Infants can be decent antennas when you have them up high enough. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, it'll work for. I imagine it'll work for you. Anybody else uh, have any questions or comments before we usher them out to the uh, waiting room here? Michelle's waving her hand. Michelle's waving her hand there. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Ralph, uh, what area of town uh, did you say you resided at? I live in Miramont. Issaquah. So up, up Tiger Mountain, south of Issaquah. Got it. Thank you. Can you hit the mic and key repeater from there? I haven't tried. I've got a handheld coming supposedly from FedEx today. But I suspect it really won't be here till Monday, and that's going to be one of my first attempts. I was just west of Miramont, and 
I, I could do it, but I know you can get in the shadow about where you are. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks, Ralph. Uh, go ahead and uh, if you could, Jim. Okay. Any uh, comments for uh, for Ralph? I think he's going to be a great member. Miramont's fairly close to me. He's up on a hill, so he shouldn't have any problems hitting any repeaters, depending on his yeah, lot. And freedom. With that height. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So, so I maybe got another local ham here. That's good for me. That's just right up the street here. So from Covington, Maple Valley. Anything else? Not hearing anything. Go ahead and cast your votes, folks. Okay, hey, two more seconds. And we have 41. Hey, go ahead and let him back in, Jim. All righty. Welcome to the club, Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Hey. hey. Ralph, uh, this is Al, KB7THX. I was on Somerset, and with that handheld that you're going to get today, I could work from Vancouver, BC to Vancouver, Washington. Wow. Uh, uh, well, it does help being at 700 feet. Exactly. I was 720. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to meeting you all in the future. Hey, uh, thanks, Ralph, for joining us. Uh, next here, let's see if I can get down here. Is that the last one? No, nope, stupid thing. There we go. And I think I think that's all we have for today. I don't see anything else. Uh, and to any uh, to uh, to the uh, other folks who just submitted their applications or uh, did it within it's like the last week or two, uh, we'll be the board will be looking at your application shortly and uh, hope to vote you in uh, next month's meeting. So thank you very much. I think that's all we have for uh, for applications here. So Jimmy had something. Yeah, uh, first I want to, um, from, from now on, every meeting, Phil, remind me to, at the end of things, is there anybody that's in the meeting today that is a prospective new member that um, hasn't, and like Phil says, hasn't done it in the last week or so, um, let me know because even though I tell everybody to put an exclamation so we can sort and kind of get a list, there was a couple of times where we had somebody join and they missed getting voted in because we didn't know that they, they were there. So is there anybody else in the meeting today that are looking to get voted in? Okay, I think we got everybody covered. Um, the other announcement is please, uh, for those that were voted in today. I just posted in the chat room. Uh, go up to the member website and up there <clears throat> you can um, go into paying membership dues. Uh, you can pay with the PayPal or with the square up in the credit card or you can also send a check to the uh, club post office box. And the last um, Thing that I had for everybody is if you're not if you haven't joined into mkarc at groups.io please join that that is how our, our main distribution list for all club emails and that's also where you get the uh, we'll be posting the zoom uh, announcements and things like that for future meetings and you can also join in the SIGs and things like that so that's all I have. Back to Nat. Hey, uh, uh, go ahead, Dave. Uh, how many new people were voted in today? Seven. That's a considerable amount. I think we yeah. have at least three. I think we have at least three that submitted application. or oh, two submitted application today for next month. Uh, yeah, let me look here. Uh... Actually, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five uh, people who submitted applications in the last week or two after since the last board meeting. 
Thank you. So, uh, so plenty of uh, folks uh, finding out about our club, and I think that's great. Is that normal amount of new membership? That seems pretty high, which is a good thing. <laughs> uh, no, usually maybe you get two or three. <laughs> what a tie. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's like lots of interest in the club, and I think that's awesome. So, so the advertising uh, campaign is working. Mm -hmm. People yeah, finding Zoom. out mostly through the nets. Zoom has a far-reaching effect. And Zoom, yeah. yeah. Okay, so next here, we'll move along on the agenda here. So, uh, let's see if, uh, hey, uh, Scott, AG7T, did you have anything as chairman of the board? I know you're busy. Not hearing anything. Uh, Hal, radio officer, you have a report for us. Yeah, um, I guess everybody probably has noticed uh, by now that the repeater is uh, a little bit quieter than it used to be. And uh, not only that, but we seem to be receiving better and uh, maybe getting out a little bit better also. Uh, we did go up to the repeater site and thanks to Steve Cook, Jim Monson, and uh, David, uh, WA7DAY, DY, WA7DY, um, we were able to uh, replace the coax and confirm that the coax did have a bad uh, fitting at the uh, antenna side. Uh, it was uh, corroded on the ground connection quite badly and didn't look like it was put together uh, properly, but. Uh, Anyway, we've uh, replaced our uh, coax with brand new LDF uh, 450 ohms and uh, seems to be working very, very well. So uh, uh, we got one left, last thing to do and that's put a ground strap on the shield, which uh, I'm still looking to purchase one. So um, also uh, thanks uh, David also for the uh, nice write up in the, uh, David Yarbrough for a nice write up in the uh, uh, newsletter, mm. and uh, I was going to write one up, and all of a sudden it was uh, Saturday morning. So uh, I'm glad he took took charge and got that done. Um, that's about it for uh, repair. Sounds good. Uh, mm -hmm. I did hear a comment, I think, from somebody, maybe uh, Dan, that uh, there was some either noise or maybe it's just a weak signal or some doubling people. Uh, don't know, but I I don't think anybody's been really hearing there the noise that we had before. So. We took care of that, I believe. Yeah, hey, hey, Hal, I um, I tested the uh, timeout feature at nine forty-five today, and it still works. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I was going to I was, I was going to shorten that up, but right, if I had a, no, I would have shortened it up about a minute, so you wouldn't have to talk so long. <laughs> I, I thought the current holder of the alligator had to hear you do that in order to give it up. Yeah, I thought so too. He did. He did. Did he? Dan. Yeah, Dan. Oh, Dan. So we have a new alligator. That's great. Yay. Hey, congratulations, Jim. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure he'd be happy in his new home there. <laughs> uh, okay, next here, I've got, uh, that's it for officer reports. We'll move on to committee reports here. And I believe Ivy and the awards committee has something. Go ahead, uh, Ivy. Hi, hi there. Uh, let's see, yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen. And yeah, screen two, share. So anyway, um, we don't, didn't have our banquet that we normally have. And so we're gonna present them here. And then hopefully next time we see you guys in, uh, in person, we can get these awards to you or whatever. But let's go ahead and go through our awards. The first one up is, let's see. The first one up is our 25 year. Uh, when you've been in the club for 25 years, you paid dues for 25 years, then you become a lifetime member. This year, we only have one. His name is Joe Langyar, uh, which means long year, and that sure, sure has felt like it. Uh, Joe joined the club in November 1995, and so when we see him next, we'll get him his uh, little award. The next one, two awards are for the swap meet and I'd like to go to either Mike or Hal to speak to these award winners. Go ahead Hal. <laughs> uh, 
Mike always uh, refuses. Yeah, um, so for the new members uh, who joined today and for people who are, are on the uh, Zoom meeting that uh, perhaps participated in this last uh, March's uh, swap meet or perhaps were unable to or didn't know about it, um, it takes a it takes a big crowd to put on the uh, swap meet, uh, over 120 some people and taking up many time slots. Lots and lots of hours are put in before and after. Um, and a lot of people put in a lot of time down there. And so every year we, we kind of look around, it's pretty hard to really come up with a good MVP because there are so many people that put in so much time. So um, this year's uh, award uh, goes to Scott Castanet, uh, KUC7UOC. Um, I believe he worked in the uh, PA administration. Scott, you got anything to say? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I was, um, I'm now a retired 911 dispatcher and was working in the announcing booth when we had our medical emergency there. So tried to help everybody as best I could. Yeah, it was a, it was a unique uh, case this year and, and uh, your uh, efforts worked out very well for that. Even I have to say as, as uh, the chair for the announcing booth, um, Scott really kept us calm. He kept us centered. He was the guy who got a hold of the uh, the fairgrounds to get the AED out there. He was the one who told me to go ahead and get uh, witness statements. He kept us calm so we could keep everybody else calm. And I would have been a basket case without him. And I really, really appreciate it. And that's why I nominated him as the uh, MVP for SWAT Meet. Agreed. Thanks, Thank you. Scott. Very honored. We do have one more award, which is a special award for swap meet. And so Hal and Mike, yeah. are you gonna talk about this? Yeah, so um, this swap meet's been going on since uh, 1982. And uh, that's a lot of years. And uh, part way through it, we, we got a a person who, who uh, really has performed well and represented the club and without uh, whom we would have a hard time uh, having a swap meet. And uh, it's uh, some way special to me and special to everybody that's on the, uh, uh, the uh, committee. I'd like to award our uh, Swap Meet Lifetime Achievement Award to Diane Ninkelman, KB7 DNE, otherwise known as the boss. <laughs> Diane, can you say something? Well, I, I'm surprised. Uh, I didn't know that a member could get a reward. Uh, gee, uh, been there, seems like forever. It's all been just great and fun. And the members or the people that come to the club, they all know me by name and not by face. <laughs> it's just something to say thank you for so much. I am been our, she's been registration chair for 25 years now. Is that correct? More than that. So, yeah. More than yeah. that? Yeah, Diane, it's, yeah, it's probably, uh, I think that's about that, right? Yeah. And uh, she has, uh, we started holding our meetings and, and started getting ready for the uh, flea market in October. And uh, <clears throat> the only one that does anything and tremendous work in prior to the flea market is Diane because she, all her work from September, starting in September all the way up through uh, uh, the day of the flea market. And then that, the, the day of the flea market is the heaviest time, but she is uh, busy, busy, busy. And uh, without her, our vendors love her, our customers love her, we love her. And uh, 
she even uh, got some converts from the four by fours that love her too. So even though she'd been kind of hard on them, but uh, they appreciate it. Thank you very much, Hal. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on. Our next one is, we actually have two awards for field day. This is not this past year, but the previous year. And one thing when we were, the awards committee was going through a lot of these awards, it's kind of like the year of the unsung hero. There are people who have helped out with things who don't get a lot of limelight, don't get a lot of fanfare. They're just Anytime you ask them to do something, they're there, they support the team, you know, and they're not asking for praise or anything else. And so this year's person is one of those. Um, I would ask him to do stuff and he didn't flinch. You know, when I needed a chair, he volunteered. When, he, when I needed anything, he was right there all the time. And so that's why this year's award winner is Phil Pia, K7PIA. And he doesn't even, he didn't know about this. He's in the same room, but he didn't know about this. But I wanted to say thank you to him for, the, for all of the help he's done with Field Day and keep it up, okay? Our, we also have one other award winner. And this one, if she hasn't gotten an award in the last 10, 15 years, I don't know why we didn't do this. I don't know what we'd do at Field Day without this person here. She is a she's a rock star and she keeps takes care of us and I wouldn't know what to do without Rita. So I want to thank you both, Phil and, and Rita, for all of the work you guys have done in Field Day. And I hope you do the same for Dan for David in the future. So thank you so much. Rita, do you have anything to say? Phil, you have anything to say? Uh, okay, thanks. I just have, go ahead, Phil. Go ahead, Rita. Okay, no, go ahead, Rita. Have, okay. Um, thank you, Ivy and the rest of the crew. Uh, this is actually my third Field Day Award. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I got, uh, Rick and I got one together, and then I got one, I think it was like the second year that I was uh, the barracks mom. And that's when um, Brendan and Steve were um, the Field Day chairs at that time. But I enjoy what I do, even though I'm in a lot of pain when I'm doing it. I really enjoy what I do, and I did really miss it this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to the next year. Great. Well, I know you haven't gotten one in a decade, so, you know, keep no, it up. I okay. <laughs> <laughs> Phil? It's like, yeah, thanks, Ivy. I'm it's like, uh, totally surprised and uh, very de uh, deeply honored to uh, receive this award today. And it's like totally surprised and shocked. So thanks everybody. It's like, I, I loved field day. I loved doing everything related to field day. And uh, it's a great honor. Thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. Um, I'd like to go to our, the other members of the committee to announce this next one, the Jim Etzweiler Helping Hands Awards. Uh, um, Robert or uh, Daniel, which one were you gonna do? I've got it. Okay. Okay, um, I don't think he's on the uh, on the meeting today, nope. but the uh, the Jim Atzweiler Helping Hands Award this year goes to Toku Okamura, AD7JA. Uh, Toku has just been uh, tremendously helpful to the club and uh, its members. Um, He's always volunteering and helping out. He does a lot of things behind the scenes that a lot of people may not be aware of. Uh, he joined in uh, 2006. Um, he is our librarian, which means he actually packs up the library. He stores the library at his place, packs it up, brings it to meetings, back when we had physical meetings, unpacks it, handles check-ins and check-outs, packs it back up, takes it back home, and repeats that every meeting. I, I think about the times when I've had to bring stuff to the meetings and, you know, it, 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 it's enough just to get up on the Saturday morning and get to the meeting. <laughs> He's bringing boxes and boxes of books to every meeting. So it's a huge task. And uh, that, uh, we have a great library now, I think, and, and uh, his bringing it to the meetings makes it all possible for members to check those books out. Uh, also, uh, he stepped out several years ago when uh, Alan Hughes passed and uh, uh, volunteered to let us store our uh, field day trailers, the equipment and tower trailers at his uh, property. And uh, it helps us out with those. Uh, uh, 
when we work on them. Um, at the swap meet, he's he does setup and tear down, as well as uh, the pallet crew that uh, brings everyone's gear in and uh, back out again. Uh, at field day, he uh, uh, sets up and mans our public information table. He mans that table through the entire uh, through the entire process, as I recall, and usually he's. he's often the only one man in it. Um, always uh, talking up ham radio to our, our visitors and guests that uh, drop by at field day. And that's a, that's a big part of, a, that's one of our bonus point things, as well as just being a big part of uh, the ambience of our setup at field day and, and, uh, and uh, reaching out to the public there. And uh, finally, we all know him for, uh, is uh, the special foods he brings to uh, the field day uh, potlucks and uh, and at the annual picnic, which we would be eating today if uh, things were normal. I, so we're missing that food this year, unfortunately. But uh, so our helping hands award goes to Toku Okamura. And, uh, unfortunately, he's not on the call today, but uh, we all appreciate him. Thanks. Uh -huh. I also uh, posted to the uh, group chat, you can see what's in the library up at the website link that I put from the our what club. Hey, who is going to do our um, Joe Hellstrom Friendship Award? I will we do that. Yeah, we don't give yeah. this thing out every year. So this is kind of nice. Yeah, I didn't get to meet Joe uh, when she was alive, but she was always a really friendly person. I'm gonna tell you, greet everybody. Uh, and that reminds us of the, one of our members uh, who's been very active in CIFR as long as I've known. He's been active in his church, uh, takes photos for the uh, meetings and posts them, and is always helpful. As Ivy said, uh, the last meeting we had, she's never seen him without a smile. Uh, and that is uh, Gary uh, Bryant. I knew him, knew him from the Federal Club when he wanted people to get along, and they weren't uh, were arguing in the meetings like that. Um, he has been always helpful. And it, some of these things, as Ivy was saying, uh, this is the unsung heroes. These are the guys behind the scenes that will take on a task and do it without uh, anybody saying anything or asking for recognition on it. And sometimes like um, Toku there, when he's doing the, um, uh, the information booth for uh, uh, field day, He's sacrificing getting on the air, which is where a lot of people like to be, getting on the radio, making contacts. But they take on these tasks and they'll do it uh, so the rest of us can enjoy the hobby better. So we uh, really appreciate Gary and all he's done. He's taken on the posting a lot of pictures of the meetings for those of us who don't get the meetings and now we're in Zoom. So it's easier for many of us who can't get to the meetings to uh, participate in it. And we're happy to give Gary the Joe Holstrom uh, Friendship Award. Uh, ready for the next one? The next one is uh, my bailiwack, uh, the Ken Jackson uh, uh, Elmore Award. Uh, this is for training Ken Jackson. Again, there's one of the members I did not meet. Uh, I came down from Alaska in about 2000. And some of these guys uh, had uh, were not as active at that point, um, but he was very active in Elmering and training and classes and explaining things like that. We have a member that's an old member. Uh, when I say old member, he's been a member of the club for a long time. I shouldn't say old, but he, even though he is, uh, he's quiet. He's reliable. He's been there whenever I asked him to do things. He's Elmering answering questions. He comes to the classes. He was doing a lot of the VE stuff first. And then I asked him uh, because of his demeanor that he'd be a teacher. He just fell in love with it. He's got a lot of experience uh, in the commercial world as well as the amateur world. He's uh, doing a raspberry pie and uh, little kits together, which is what we used to do back in the 70s. Uh, and that is going to be a Dick Lundstrom. Uh, Dick Lundstrom, uh, he finally changed his call, the uh, W7INK, wink. Um, but he has been very helpful in the classes and reliable. And here again, he's an unsung he hero. He gives up coming to the club meetings 
to teach in the classes because we have a lot of our classes on Saturday. Uh, and he loves the VE. He is just, again, he's got a smile on his face. One of these unsung heroes on the th situation. Uh, I think we're needed for the next one. Anybody else want to say okay. something about that? Uh, oh, sorry. Um, on the next one, uh, last year we didn't have a, a, a Pop Brown Award. And so we've got a, a little bit of a treat for everyone. We've got two this year. So um, Daniel uh, and Robert will be introducing them. So Daniel, you go ahead and go first. Okay, I remember this guy when he got licensed, was excited about amateur radio. He became a VE, then he got so active with other things that he didn't VE very much. And uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, I end up with a big team of VEs that help out with the classes. We've got one of the largest training classes in five states, I say. Um, he's active in the community. He's active in the church, the Knights of Columbus. Uh, he was very active in swap meet. He took on one of the, the toughest jobs in the club and has done a good job at it. Uh, he's a treasurer. He has spearheaded the Zoom meetings with the special interest at daily rag shoes and all the uh, zoom meetings we having which is really uh, adding to the club i think that's why we got so many members joining the club at this point uh is because of jim kearney can i read but uh, you're <laughs> i'm sorry my, my irish is as good as it probably should be if can I the can I the Irish. <laughs> And we had to have a special rule change to be enable someone who's currently on the board, but he's one of those unusual officers that we don't want him to like. We don't want to get rid of him after two years. We want to keep him. So we years. had a rule change so that we could actually honor him. Yeah. So Robert, you've got the next one coming up. Yes, I do. Uh, our second recipient of the Pop Brown Award this year is Tim Kane, K7ANE. Uh, Tim joined uh, the club in 2006. Uh, just a couple years later, he got involved uh, in uh, leading the club, uh, serving a term as vice president in 2008 to 2009. And after that, he uh, served in a period of 10 or 11 years, 2009 to 2019. He served uh, four terms, so eight years, as a trustee, and four of those years he was uh, also chairman of the board. Um, he has been our uh, MCOM Elmer for the last five or six years at the swap meet. Uh, he's a perennial, uh, always at the swap meet, uh, typically doing announcing, security, and uh, setup and takedown. Uh, uh, Great presence at field day. He's always there for the setup and takedown, and Ivy can tell you how important that is to have people that we can count on for that. But besides that, he assists me with the uh, the 20 meter station down in the bunker, helping to set that up and take it down, as well as uh, usually serving as both the lead off and anchor leg of the uh, of the actual radio operation down there. He's my go to guy on uh, getting things going and and closing them down on Sunday. Um, outside of the club, he has been tremendously uh, active with the Red Cross, both in uh, the ham radio area and outside of it. Uh, he's taught the ham radio, numerous ham radio classes uh, with Red Cross, as well as uh, MCOM and uh, Red Cross safety and security and weapons of mass destruction uh, classes. I assume that's how to cope with we weapons of mass destruction, not how to build them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he, has, <clears throat> he has deployed with the Red Cross for a tremendous number of disasters, maybe uh, about 20 disasters around the country over the years, including uh, 12 or 13 hurricanes, as well as um, other uh, fl major flood events and other storms. Uh, one year, particularly, I know he was deployed for one of the big hurricanes because it came right at the time of the salmon run, which we usually do together. and. Uh, so we didn't do salmon run that year. Uh, that's uh, part of the sacrifice of what Tim has done. Um, 
He also serves uh, with the Boy Scouts of America as uh, amateur radio merit badge counselor, as well as uh, for other merit badges, such as emergency prep preparedness and the various citizenship uh, merit badges. Uh, he's also taught emergency preparedness uh, courses. And as some of you may know, he's uh, into genealogy, not a ham radio thing, but he teaches uh, and advises on genealogy at uh, South Seattle Community College. And he's also taught uh, several classes on uh, industrial security uh, for the American Society of Industrial Security. So uh, I, we, uh, we wanna thank Tim for his uh, great service to the club and the hobby. And for that, he uh, receives the Pop Brown Award this year. Uh, Tim has been on our list as a potential awardee for this for several years, but we had to wait until he got out of office for a year before we could yeah. actually give it to him. Yeah, so I wanna say thank you, Tim, for all you've done for the club. And uh, that's pretty much all I've got. Um, yep. There is one other award, which isn't really a club award, it's a me award. And so when we finally get together and in person and see each other, I'd like to induct Marsha Esser, KJ7EKY, into the uh, sisterhood of the pink hard hat. So when I see her, <laughs> she will get a hard hat. I try and encourage women to get on the bluff and help out and work. And if you've seen the, um, seen the bluff it's kind of a testosterone heavy environment so Ivy? i try and reward women who show up yes ma'am you haven't gotten one uh i have my own but oh that's but of right. course and it's right out there in the other room there um why don't you tell people especially our new members we've got a lot of board here right now uh in the meeting and uh oh, what the pop brown award is named for and what it is really all about and yeah. from who? The Pop Brown Award, well, as you well know, because you have received it before, um, it is the, the name of the founder of our club. Uh, he was the original K7 LED, and this award is for the person in the club who not only works so hard with the club itself, but is also involved in the community and just speaks to the highest ideals of ham radio you know that's it is the highest award we can give uh one of the uh side benefits of having received this is you become on the awards committee and now that we have two uh robert and i will be sort of rolling off of the committee and tim and jim will be joining daniel for next year's awards committee but i want to congratulate everyone who's was recognized this year um, it's always hard doing these. It's really hard because there are so many people who do such a fabulous job in this club. And that's why I really think we're one of the better clubs around. So thank you all very much. And um, I guess Daniel I, gets Ivy, to do this next year. Ivy. Sir. This is what one of the, uh, the uh, awards looks like. Uh, then the, I think we also have a plaque we put them on. So those rewards that you have uh, ordered will be given when they catch up to the people in person. Right. And I'll put some pictures of the awards before we give them out, you know, when we can finally meet in person. I'll put some pictures in for the, um, for the relay so we can all see them. Okay, back to Nat. Okay, thank, uh, thanks Ivy for uh, all that. And uh, congrats to all the winners. Uh, today we and have uh, sam's and we have up. sam with a quest i was just about to say that go ahead sam uh, i ivy and daniel and bob i want to thank you for the work on the awards committee because having been there and walked that walk you did a yeoman's job this year a fabulous a slate of, of winners and it's really well deserved for everybody and thank you for all your effort because it, it's not an easy job making these decisions. Thank you. It is a hard job. I will, con I will <laughs> confess. So anyway, I'm going to mute myself and back to the meeting. Okay. Thank, uh, thank, great. Uh, thanks, Ivy, for that. And I was totally surprised by that. So thanks. <laughs> Phil, we have uh, one more from uh, Michael. Or oh, do we? Oh, yeah, KG7MX. KG7MX. Go ahead. Well, at the... Uh, I'll keep this brief, 
but uh, Jim Canary was our treasurer when we uh, applied to the IRS for recognition mm -hmm. as a nonprofit organization. And he had to redo the financial statements about five times because the IRS kept changing its criteria on us. <laughs> and uh, his uh, financial work at that time was really outstanding. And it was not mentioned in the extensive list of his accomplishments. So I thought I would bring it up here. All your taxes are belong to us. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Yeah, congrats, Jim, and uh, and to uh, and to all the winners, uh, you Great. all deserved it. <laughs> Somebody else. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I want to. Uh, I forgot to mention that there are so many things these people do behind the scenes. It's hard to mention everything. Uh, and like Ivy said, these are the unsung heroes that just volunteer all kinds of places and different places. You'll find them popping up doing things. And that's what makes the club so great when we all participate and do little things. And again, you, you, they sacrifice some events to, to help out in other areas. It's, uh, these people well deserve these awards. Back to you. Okay, yeah, great. Thanks. Okay, moving along here. Uh, do we have any other committee chairs or liaisons that have any reports for us before we move on? Any committee reports? Go ahead, you can go ahead and speak. Not hearing anything. So moving along here, do we have any old business? Old business. Not hearing anything. How about uh, any new business? Uh, we have Jason who has uh, something for us. Yeah, great, thanks, I'll make it short. Uh, yeah, basically we're going to, uh, I've put together a, a questionnaire that we'll send out uh, Monday probably of next week, we'll post it up on Groups IO. But it's a questionnaire to try and get is the new activities manager, try and get a better understanding of maybe what the club wants to see and what you're interested in. So uh, put together a, a extensive list uh, of, of uh, different activities uh, pulled from some previous um, questionnaires and then also some new items. And uh, so a Google Forms uh, questionnaire will be sent out and please take the time and it's, it's not real long. It should take you a little bit of time and, and just uh, get that sent in so we can try and pull that all together and try and have a, a set of good activities coming forward that maybe will resonate more with the club. So appreciate your feedback. Uh, it is anonymous unless you, uh, there's a question about uh, if you'd like to present uh, and I ask for your, your contact info, but otherwise it's anonymous. And uh, once I get all the information together, uh, hopefully I'll be able to present at the next club meeting of the results of the, uh, the survey. And then we'll be able to start planning moving forward for future activities, uh, try, and, try and make it more fun for everyone. So appreciate everyone's time to, to take a few minutes and fill that out when it comes out. So that'll be emailed to everybody? I'm going to email it. I still probably work with Jim a bit, but email and groups IO. So you'll have okay. different methods to, to get out to the, to the site. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Jason, for uh, putting that together. And uh, I'll be looking for that cool. and then fill, uh, fill that out for sure. Any uh, any other uh, new business? Go we ahead. Have, uh, Mike Dinkelman has his hand up. Uh, Dinkelman, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, I'm off yeah. of the mic. Okay. Uh, salmon run next month. We have a club meeting, but the same weekend we have the salmon run. So I'm encouraging all members. It actually counts as a club activity. It counts like you're actually at the club meeting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you can work from home or maybe this is your chance to get out and go someplace and maybe a little miniature field day someplace on a rare county would be nice. I know a lot of us are in King County or Snohomish or uh, Pugetropolis. You might, it, it's kind of fun to go out and uh, go to a rare county and put it on for a couple of days. The rules are up at the Western Washington mm -hmm. DX Club site. You can go up there You'll also find a couple links in uh, last month's uh, newsletter, or this month's news newsletter, excuse me. So uh, I have intentions of going out to Eastern Washington one day and Western Washington the next. So uh, I'm going to do it a little bit different, but uh, uh, it'll be fun going out mobile. So uh, 
if they have any questions about the Salmon Run, I am the chairperson, uh, so you can send me email as well. So I just encourage everybody to get in that last bit of summer, uh, Indian summer, hopefully, and uh, go out and participate in the Salmon Run. That's all I got. Yep, that's where I'll be uh, that weekend too, so I'll have to... Uh... It's like I usually do it with W7PU, and it's again like, we do a little uh, field day style thing. It's always fun. Uh, do we have any? Do, oh, do we have any questions for Mike? Bill, we have one more hand up. Uh, Tim Kane, with Tim. A chance. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to say that uh, Robert and I, and maybe Robin as well. Uh, we're going to hit the road uh, for Salmon Run, and uh looks like we're going to go up to um, Blewett Pass again and do the uh, uh, up on the county line up there. So uh, we look forward to hearing you guys, uh, uh, and hopefully uh, we'll uh, be able to get a few points put together. Okay, great. Is that the same spot you went to for, uh, for uh, field day? Yeah. It is. It's uh, – it's the spot that uh, Robert and I have been going to for a salmon run for, I don't know, four years now. Okay. It's like four or that. five years now. And yeah. we decided to uh, give it a shot for field day because it had worked so well. So uh, uh, we'll be going back up there uh, on uh, either Thursday or Friday of uh, uh, the salmon run weekend. And I, I want to add uh, on what uh, Mike was talking about. Uh, if you go out and do a rare county, the, a number of counties have uh, yes. very few uh, hams. And uh, this is, if you've operated field day or other contests, you know, it can be hard to break in on pileups and stuff mm -hmm. uh, because of our location relative to where most of the hams are and so forth. But with the salmon run, we are the focus. And if you're in a rare county, they you are you. the pile up. You you get to be they in want you. after commodities. So um, uh, I don't know if they still have it up. There used to be something on the WWDXC website about what the rare counties are, but um, generally you can find them by population. The the less populous counties, especially uh, southeast and south uh, southeast North and northeast North Washington. North East. Are rare, but we have we have a few over here in Western Washington too, like Wakayak and um, Skamania down south, uh, and even even some of the counties that you would think uh, have a fair amount of population, uh, like Mason and Lewis uh, down in the central area, sometimes have very few hams operating from them. So you you may be one of only uh, you may be almost by yourself. We've had Tim and I can tell you we've had years where we could not find anyone in certain counties that should have had someone on the air maybe that's our problem too but you know when we get 30 35 out of 39 counties and we don't get lewis county it's kind of or pacific county it's kind of funny because there's people there uh so yeah go out and uh, do a county and be the be the pile up <laughs> uh mike had something looks like he has his hand raised yeah. Uh, in addition, if you are going to activate a county, or even if you're not good, maybe you already live in a fairly rare county, you can go to the Western Washington DS Club site, and there is a place where you can put yourself on a list that says where you're going, what county you're going to be operating from. You can even say what modes, and I think you could even put suggested frequencies on it. Sure. So, uh, you know, we're not looking just for the rovers and the expeditions uh and the mobiles to to put themselves on that list but everybody because what's going to be happening is that people across the country and even if you're lucky and we've had a few sunspots show up lately europe and japan will show up and they're looking for those specific counties too and they can't wait all day so uh if they know that where they can look that's that's a good way of doing it so uh and i, and I don't know uh, the the contest this year have been kind of heavy because people have been stuck at home so they're participating oh and by the way this is the only contest where you can actually win salmon granted yep. smoked salmon granted most people are not going to meet that high level with they you know but uh the the uh, western washington dx club 
does put out plaques, uh, certificates, and smoked salmon to a few deserving few. So go again, check out the links in the relay and you can uh, learn a little bit more about this. And it's not limit, well, HF is a better way to go. You can actually get on on HF or VHF if you want to, but uh, you know, it, it would just be for grins, I guess. So 80 meters. I'm, uh, I'm hoping to hear you on again from PU again there, Phil. I appreciate yeah. you guys. They, PU, uh, W7 PU is pretty high in the rankings every year. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Are, are we working, are we earning points for the club or is it individual contesting for that? This is individual. So oh, actually, yeah. sorry, no, there is a aggregate club score. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the past few years, we've only had three or four people putting their scores in towards that. And if you go look at the past few years, uh, standings, the, the past years are there, you'll see that the Redmond Radio Club or the Radio Club of Redmond is, is usually the one to beat. And uh, the Western Washington DX Club is not, uh, is not allowed to win. So it has to be uh, another, not the sponsoring club. But uh, yeah, we could raise our sales, ourselves up in the rankings a little bit if we just mm -hmm. got a few more people to submit scores. So yeah, anyway. yeah. So if, if you do it, be sure and put the, the club in in the slot where in your entry. Yeah. What are the logging requirements? The, the, logging, the logging Cabrillo log file. You, it's required to send a Cabrillo log. If you aren't using a program that produces a Cabrillo log, there is a site where you can go and create a Cabrillo log. You'll have to type in your contacts. We no longer accept paper logs. Okay. Uh, Mike, uh, did you want to uh, say anything about uh, your glasses? So the glasses are kind of a side thing. They aren't, a, they aren't sponsored by the Western, the Salmon Run is, but the glasses are something I do myself. This is the second year. I buy about 20 glasses and I send them out to like, well, did you get one last year? You did, I right? Did. Yeah, Absolutely. so I, I like to send them out to people that put out a special effort. So just about everybody who goes out and does a decent expedition or a rover or a mobile, of course, if more than 20 people go out, they're not gonna get one. But uh, I've, I, I kind of look for special efforts in, in the salmon run and I'll send them a glass. And I sent out an email on the reflector here a few days ago. And, uh, and uh, if you can buy a glass too. So that helps me keep the cost down because in sp instead of spending 10 bucks a glass, it's down to like less than seven, I think now. So that's kind of nice. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, and this is the second year. I think the first one was kind of pretty though. I messed up. It was supposed to be a salmon on the glass, and it was an orca. But this year we got a real salmon on the glass. So it's, it's uh, a collector's item. It's like there you go. It's it's rare. This it's is the second be a year now. Rare and collectible. The orca, the orca was already full of salmon. <laughs> yes. Think about it that way. Yeah. <laughs> this is the second year, so they're officially collectible now. Yeah. So anyway. Oh. Uh, and I think that's kind of fun. And a lot of people wrote back to me and said they really appreciated that. So, but that's just something I do on the side. So anything else? Not hearing anything. Thanks, uh, thanks Mike, for bringing that up. And uh, yeah, I'll be, it's like I, Salmon Run is a definitely something I look forward to every year. Second, right behind, uh, second right behind field day. So yeah. thanks for bringing that up, Mike. It won't be canceled. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> That's the nice thing about these contests. It's like you can do them by yourself if you have to. So, uh, let's see here. Do we have any? Uh, it's like it's like I don't hear any any other new business. How about uh, good of the order? Anything for the good of the order before we adjourn? Sam has his hand up. Go ahead, Sam. I would like to th thank uh, Robin, Robert, and Tim for the yeoman effort at Blewett Pass and, and especially the, the tome they wrote into the newsletter about the experience. It was very, very interesting reading. And uh, as M Mike can say, as a f the former newsletter editor and the new newsletter editor, 
probably really appreciate those type of efforts because it was a fabulous article. Thank yeah, you. Very well done. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else have any uh, anything for the good of the order? Hey, Phil, before we adjourn, let's make sure we work our auction and the door prize. Uh, it's like we're going to be doing that uh, after the uh, meeting, after we adjourn. Sounds good. Anybody uh, Anybody else have anything for the good of the order? I actually don't understand at all how this auction works. Have you sent out instructions? We will talk about it after we adjourn. We'll kind of explain it's really easy, so. Oh, it's a post-meeting. Okay, I thought that was something else. Okay, it's a got it. post-meeting activity, yeah. Do we no. have it? Yes, Jim. I would like to propose that we close this meeting so that we can have a quick break and do a door prize. So Jim moves that we adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? Second. second it. Uh, got you down, Tim. Uh, all in favor and all opposed, uh, go ahead and cast your votes. Plus it's time to get a refill. <laughs> certainly is. All righty. And it looks Two like more we seconds. Are yeah, needless to say, we've got 35. All right, so uh, motion is approved and we will adjourn today's meeting. The next, Mike and Key, the next Mike and Key general membership meeting is on the third Saturday of the month and that's September 19th at 10 a.m. right here on Zoom. So uh, the, um, this meeting is adjourned and thanks everybody for attending. We'll have some post meeting activities here. It looks like we've got a drawing and an auction here. Sounds like fun. Then we got a little program by Jason. So don't, ever, don't anybody leave because we've got a great thing going here for the door prize. Uh, yeah. Because now I got the list made. If you leave, you won't get a chance to do it. So you must be you. present to win. Yep. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Yep. Let's take a five minute break and we can.